there are a lot of functions in Excel and there might seem like there is a function for almost everything and anything. So how do you know which ones are the most useful and more importantly, which ones are really worth spending your time on learning? Well, today I'm gonna to answer those questions. I'm gonna cover my top five functions in Excel that you need to know. And let me know in the comments, which one is your favorite. Let's jump right in. Function number one is sum ifs. With sum ifs, you can sum a portion of your data set based on predefined criteria. Let's say I wanted to find out what are the total sales for the East region portion of my data set. If I type sum ifs, first the function asks me for the range that I want to sum. So this is going to be my sales column. Next, I need to tell the function the range which holds the criteria and this is going to be column B. Finally, I can tell the function what the criteria for the criteria range is, and this is going to be the East region. Now I can evaluate the function and get the total sales for every entry of the data set where the region is East. We can also sum based on more than one criteria, like in the next example. Let's say we wanted to find the total sales where the region is west and the department is fruit. Let's type the sum ifs function again and tell the function we want to sum the sales column. Our first criteria range is going to be the region column. Now we tell the function the criteria for that range, which will be west. Then we move to the next criteria set. Our range will be the department this time and the criteria for the range is fruit. Now we can evaluate the function and get the total sales for all entries where the region is west and the department is fruit. What about the next example? We want to find the total sales that occurred in Europe. We can see that we have the locations as part of our transaction ID. However, they seem to be embedded within a transaction date and in the transaction identifier. Let's see what's going to happen if we try and write our sum ifs function as normal. I'll set range to sum again as our sales column and our criteria range as column A. And finally, I'll set the criteria to be Europe. When we evaluate the function, we don't actually get the answer we're looking for because the function cannot identify the region of Europe within the overall transaction IDs. Here's where we can introduce what's known as wildcards. Within the function, if I put a star sign before the criteria value and also after the criteria value, I'm telling the function to look for the word Europe somewhere within the transaction ID. The wildcard before the criteria tells Excel that there may be some text before the value we're interested in. And the wildcard after tells Excel there may be some text also located after the word Europe. Now, when we evaluate the function, we get the desired result. Function number two is XLOOKUP. You might have already heard about VLOOKUP, but XLOOKUP is a much more powerful and improved version of VLOOKUP. It can easily perform the same tasks as VLOOKUP. For example, let's say we wanted to look up this payment ID and return the employee name who was responsible for the payment. First, just type XLOOKUP and now tell the function the lookup value. Next, we want to tell the function what is the lookup array or where it should search for the lookup value. So that's going to be column B, where our payment IDs are contained. The return array is going to be column G, which contains our employee names. The rest of the arguments are optional, so we can evaluate the function now to correctly get the name Johnny. In this example, our lookup value was located to the left compared to the value that was returned. But what about when our lookup value is located to the right of the value, which we want the function to return? We know that this is something VLOOKUP can't do, but XLOOKUP can handle this easily. In our next example, we want to look up the line manager for the employee Hillary. 
if we type the x lookup again and then tell the function our lookup value is Hillary, next we can tell the function to look up column G. And finally, we can tell the function to return the value contained within column F. When we evaluate, we get the value of Harry, which happens to be Hillary's line manager. Because the lookup array and the return array are independent of each other, XLOOKUP is able to look up from left to right, but also from right to left, something that VLOOKUP can't do. What about looking up more than one value? Let's say we wanted to look up the line manager that works in the east region and is responsible for the dairy products. Let's type XLOOKUP and set the first lookup value as east. Then we can tell the function we have another lookup value by including an ampersand sign and define the next lookup value as dairy. For the lookup array, we set the first column D, which is our region column, and then we use an ampersand sign to tell the function the second lookup array. Finally, we tell the function the return array, which is going to be the line manager column. When we evaluate the function, we get Mason, who happens to be the line manager in the east region for all dairy products. One of the other problems with VLOOKUP is that it always returns the first value within the dataset it finds. Our dataset here is sorted based on date, starting at the oldest and ending with the newest. We want to find what is the most recent sale for our employee, Tony. If we use XLOOKUP, we can look up the employee name Tony with column G and return the sales value. We get a value of 5,700, but this wasn't the most recent sale recorded by Tony, as we can see from the bottom of the dataset. Here's where we can make use of one of the optional arguments within the XLOOKUP function. You will notice that the last optional argument is called search mode. If I move to this argument, you will see that the default search mode is first to last, which means the function will start searching at the top of the dataset and working its way down. But we can override this and tell the function that we want to search from last to first, meaning that the function will start at the bottom of our dataset and work its way up. So let's put minus one here and evaluate the function. Now we get the last sale entry in the dataset for Tony, which was 10,200. Function number three is the if function. With the if function, we supply the function with a logic test. The function checks if the test is true or false and then returns a true value or a false value. If we wanted to check if an employee was eligible for a bonus based on them meeting a sales target greater than or equal to 75,000, we could type the if function. Our logic test here will be to check if sales are greater than or equal to 75,000. If that test is true, we want the function to tell us to pay a bonus. But if it's not true, we want the function to return not applicable. Once we evaluate and then fill down, it's quite clear which employees within our dataset need to be paid an annual bonus. We can use the if function to return multiple values by using nested ifs. Nested ifs are just one if statement within another if statement. For the second example, we have a bonus tiering, dependent upon how well each employee has performed. For sales greater than or equal to 90,000, we want to tag this bonus as tier 1. And for 80,000, we want to tag this bonus as tier 2. And for 75,000, we want to tag this as tier 3. So let's type if again and define our first logic test. This will be if the sales are greater than or equal to 90,000. If it's true, then we want the function to return the value tier 1. And if it's not true, we want to enter into a second if statement. So again, we type if. This time, we will check if the sales are greater than or equal to 80,000. If it's true, we want the function to return tier 2. And if it's false, we need to do one final check. 
we need to check if the sales is greater than or equal to 75,000. And if it's true, we will tag this as tier three. Finally, we define our false value. If all of the first three logical tests fail, let's again set this to not applicable. Now we can evaluate the function and use the fill handle to populate our entire data range. All the values greater than or equal to 90,000 have been tagged as tier one. Anything greater than 80,000 has been tagged as tier two and anything greater than or equal to 75,000 has been tagged as tier three. So far, we've been checking one criteria within each if statement logical test. But what if we need to check multiple criteria within our logical test? Let's say we wanted to calculate the new salaries for the company. And to do that, we need to check if anybody has a salary less than 30,000 and works in the fruit department then these employees should get a salary increase with all other employees remaining the same. So here, there's two criterias to check rather than one. Let's type if and then immediately type and. Our first logical check will be to see if the salary less than 30,000 and our second logical test will be to see if the employee works within the fruit department. Now we can close the bracket as we're finished with our logical tests and define true and false outcomes. If the logical test is true, we should increase the employee's salary by 5,000. But if the logical test is false, the salary will remain the same. Now we can close the final bracket and evaluate and then fill down these results. Todd is the only employee within the fruit department who has a salary less than 30,000. So we can see his new salary has been increased and all other salaries remain the same. Function number four is the filter function. The filter function allows us to return a filtered portion of a data set to a separate location within our workbook based on dynamic criteria we give the function. Let's say I wanted to return the information within this data set but only where the region is the south location. Start off by typing filter. The first argument we need to give the function is the array. The array is the range of data we want the function to return. So let me select all of the data within this data set. Next, the function asks me what I want included. In other words, how do we want to filter this data? We can't just use the reference directly. We need to tell the function which column of the dataset contains our criteria. So this is going to be column A. And then I can let this equal to the south location. Now when I close the bracket and evaluate the function, we get all of the row entries where the region is south. Our function is contained within one cell, but spilled all of the information into the adjacent cells and the cells below because this is one of Excel's dynamic array functions. Now, what if we want to filter the data set on more than one criteria? For example, we want to return all of the row entries where the region is south and the division is dairy. Type filter and again select the array as our entire data set. For the include arguments, let's open a bracket and select our first range, which is going to be the region column and let this equal to our criteria, which is south. Now close the bracket and next let's type a multiplication sign. This is how we tell the filter function we have more than one filtering criteria and we're interested in satisfying both. We can open a bracket again and this time select our second range, which is the division column and let this equal to dairy. When we close the function and evaluate, we get the one dataset entry where the region is south and the division is dairy. In this example, we wanted both of the criterias to be satisfied, and we did this using the multiplication sign in between each criteria. We can also use the filter function to return values if either of the criterias are found. 
To do this, we can simply change the multiplication sign to the plus sign, which tells the function to return all rows where the region is south and where the division is dairy. Because our function is a dynamic array function, it spills results into the adjacent cells and cells below. If there was any value already contained within a cell, the function is trying to populate, we get a hash spill error. If you see this error, you know it means that there is already data contained somewhere in your worksheet where the function output is trying to populate. If you remove this value, the function repopulates as we've seen before. Function number five is the trim function. This function allows us to remove spaces before, after, and the additional spaces between text values. If we write trim, we can see that the function only takes one input, which is the text value we want to correct. Once we evaluate, we can fill down this formula to correct the results within our data set. Now, any blank spaces that existed before, in between or after these text values have been removed. We can also use the proper function to take care of these incorrectly capitalised letters. We can wrap the trim function in a proper function. The proper function capitalises the first letter in every word of our text string and allocates lowercase letters to all remaining letters. Sometimes it might seem a little strange that we want to write formulas that don't perform as we expect. Like in this example, we're using the sumifs function to try and calculate all of the sales from the south region, but it's returning a value of zero even though we can see many entries for south. If we go to the region column and press F2 to enter the cell edit mode, we can actually see that there is a space before each of our region names. So our criteria value within our formula is not exactly the same as the value contained within the region column. Here's where we can use the trim function to remove all of these unwanted spaces. Let's type trim and give the function the region input and evaluate the formula. We can fill this down and then copy these corrected values. Let's paste these values into the region column. Once we paste, we can see that our formula gets updated and now we get the total correct sales for the south region. So those are my top five functions. I hope that these will make your data analysis in Excel a little easier. If there was a function you hope to see on my list, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. As always, have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.